Congress. The Board of County Commissioners meeting will come to order. <coughs> the record show today is April 17th, 2019, and the time is 9 o'clock a.m. We're meeting at the airport, Silver West Airport today. Uh, Mr. Giacomelli, would you do the honor, sir, in leading us with the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Good morning. The donuts got You're here welcome. just in time for the pledge. Now they're, now they're legit. We can eat them. <laughs> I can put it up here. I move we be here always. <laughs> What's an airport meeting without donuts? <laughs> Madam Secretary, would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Flower. Present. Commissioner Campbell. Here. Commissioner Prince. Here. Attorney Clint Smith. Present. And Clerk to the Board, Kelly Camper. Prince. My apologies, that would be Clerk to the Board, not Secretary to the Board. I'm trying to get that cemented in this weak mind of mine. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate that. Uh, amendments to the agenda, gentlemen. None here. No, sir. Uh, nor do I. Uh, at this time, we will have audience introductions. Mr. Wilson, if you'd start. Go we'll slow now. Move our way back. Uh, yeah, our clerk will record uh, all the guests that are at our meetings, so if you can speak uh, clearly and loudly so she can understand and write down your names, we would appreciate that. Wilson Jarvis, World Coast Kingdom. Good job. Jack, you the Sentinel and GRD. Dan Green, Airport Board. Bob Giacomelli, Airport Board. Lisa Dugan. Vince Dugan, President of Corner Party Owners Association. Nice. Vince, what was your last name? JC Dugan. 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 JC, yes. Yep. Len McGree, Airport Board. Bob Jolly, Airport Manager. Sharon Connolly, Airport Secretary. Okay, thank you. And JC, what's your last name? Mine? Mandine. Mandine? N A N. This is November? N A N. Yeah. Got it. And while we're at that, I'll address an issue that we spoke to. I don't know. Uh, I look back to Ms. Meredith, our administrative assistant. Did we send a letter of appointment notice to Mr. J.C. after we approved him? Um, I don't. I don't. No. I don't think we have. But if you did, I wasn't aware of it. No. Okay. Can we make a note of that, and we will notify you in writing of your appointment on the board. Uh, so we appreciate it. Thank you. Well, then you better you brought donuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we brought need to, those in betting on the cup. We need to get it on that, that's for sure. Uh, chair would entertain a motion on the approval of the minutes. I'll move we approve. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes from March 29, April 2nd, April 3rd special meeting, and April 3rd regular meeting. I assume, gentlemen, you have an opportunity to look at those. As did I. Uh, thank you, Kelly. That was a lot of work. Appreciate that. <coughs> Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of approving the minutes as mentioned, say aye. 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 I'm sorry. It's Opposed, okay. nay. Okay. Motion carries. You can abstain. March 29, April 2nd, April 3rd special meeting, and April 3rd regular meeting minutes have been approved. Uh, Commissioner Items, <clears throat> Commissioner Kanda, would you like to begin, sir? Sure, I'll start off with some airport stuff since we're at the airport, in, in honor of the airport. Thanks for doing this, guys. This is really nice. Uh, and, and I've heard Tom, he's got his initials already in it, all carved mine in the back. Right here. <laughs> nice deal, though. And uh, thanks, Tom, for helping get this out here You're welcome. Uh, from the school no piece of school property. Uh, yeah. It's really nice. Um, so, uh, lots going on tomorrow. The airport board has a meeting with Christy Doon. Uh, the grant was filled out in plenty of time, uh, and she had some questions. She's coming out here to tour the airport, look it over, understand what we had said in the grant application. We uh, got together and did uh, answer her questions, sent them back to her so she can study up, and then you guys will be able to fill in tomorrow. I guess that starts at, what, 10 tomorrow? Yeah, Your meeting does. And she, and Meredith is the guest uh, of honor that gets to escort her around and also learn. 
right? Meredith? Yep. <laughs> um, now we're going to start the second phase. You, you, uh, you all are aware that the uh, OT6 Ranch has been very generous with the airport and we've been able to move up some of the stuff from our capital investment plan uh, early and uh, they're uh, uh, increasing things. The first phase was to remove the berm that's in the way of the wings of the bigger airplanes. Creates some problems out there. Uh, that was done in the fall. Now we're going to start the ramp expansion project, the taxiway, uh, new taxiway, in order to get traffic flow in and out of here better, and the fuel farm that's going to be increased to include jet A and a bigger AV gas tank and, uh, and a ramp uh, you know, space for it. So that will be uh, putting out a contract. Uh, uh, the Armstrong Engineering is handling the subcontract work for us, and so we'll start that phase as soon as we can. We've got to time it with the grant, just so you know, uh, because we can't complete work before the, you know, the, they won't reimburse us. So we're going to time the movement of the fuel farm with the actual taxiway construction. Uh, <clears throat> neat, uh, Tom and Jay were at the uh, Custer County Emergency Services meeting. When, when was that? Just yesterday or the day before? Yesterday. Uh, UAV discussion, and it would have been great to have some of the airport guys there. If I'd have known um, more of the agenda, it would have been good to have you, have you there. Uh, neat program uh, to use at UAVs for search and rescue kinds of things, fire, look, um, finding people that are lost, uh, flood um, stuff and all that. So uh, they're looking to help. Uh, got, well, I learned a lot. It was a good meeting, I thought. We'll see uh, Coast County Sheriff is uh, sponsoring uh, maybe looking at that further. <clears throat> the, uh, also, we've had a lot of activity in the water uh, issues that we've been working with. Upper Arc meeting that we all attended. I thought was very informative. I, I didn't realize the agenda was going to have a presentation by the USDA, but it talked about the uh, underwater aquifer here. And uh, I think uh, they're going to send us a link to that report. I hope we get uh, that soon. It's worth having it in our files anyway. And then uh, <clears throat> the other, uh, we've had some community meetings uh, that we've all been partaking uh, with the, with the uh, zoning guys, uh, some good, good discussions on land use involving water as well. Uh, broadband keeps popping up. Um, we're going to have a meeting with the, uh, the grant people. When is that? The, no, May the 3rd? Is that on the agenda to discuss that? Mm -hmm. I'll have to look and see. <coughs> I don't have any process of still putting that together, but um, is that federal or, or the, the federal, federal side? With, with the Custer County Economic May Development May 7th. Board, May 7th. Yeah. In the meantime, uh, there's a new grant out that's sponsored by the uh, feds, uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and the state director is a gal named Sally Clark. She's a former El Paso County Commissioner and is the director for the uh, broad rural broadband uh, connection um, for the rural communities. Uh, Silvercliff is sponsoring that, and Jay, you asked me to let you know when that meeting was. I'll, I'll let you know when. I don't have the date oh, okay. yet, but they're they're pulling that meeting together with her. They're coordinating I'd that. Because like she thinks it's an uh, ideal uh, county to use as a uh, showcase for this particular thing. They got up to 10 million bucks uh, to offer for a fiber into the county. So that would be very useful to understand from our point of view. And... When was that meeting? Don't know yet. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're trying to coordinate that. Okay. It should be within the next couple of weeks. Getting on her schedule. And that's all I know for now. If there's other things, but uh, I'll bet I'll remember when you tell me. Whoever's next. Uh, yeah, it seems like it's been a busy sure has. few days <clears throat> since we last met. Um, <clears throat> April 9th, uh, I sat in on the tourism board meeting, uh, also attended the Central Republican Committee meeting that evening or that afternoon over in the annex. April 10th, I attended the Middle Arkansas Wildlife Prevention uh, Plan meeting. Uh, it was interesting to sit with those folks. Uh, they met actually in Westcliff. It's kind of a regional, I think, tri-county uh, group. 
And on the 10th, I attended a Friends of the Beckwith Ranch board meeting. They're starting back up and trying to get some momentum to move forward. Uh, I also attended the Upper Arkansas Conservancy District meeting over in Salida. Uh, listened very intently and interested in their USGS's report, as Commissioner Kanda mentioned, on the uh, study that Upper Arkansas is funding right now to to basically study the potential for underground water storage in the Wet Mountain Valley. They have expended about $400,000 on those studies so far to this date. Um, when asked, uh, their general manager said he had no idea what their next plan would be once the study was finished, and I just found that almost ludicrous that they would drop almost a half a million dollars on a study and not have some idea what they're going to do when they get the results of this study. So it continues to be a shell game up there uh, with those folks, but um, I'm, I'm glad I was there, and certainly I appreciate the fact that all three commissioners uh, are concerned enough to attend that meeting. And, and uh, So I thought that was really the biggest thing that came out of that meeting. Uh, USGS, I thought, did a great job of, of laying out that presentation. Sure was so, a good one. Uh, very informative. <clears throat> but uh, So we'll see. There's a lot of eyes on the Wet Mountain Valley, without a doubt. They there are people that are going to want our water and access to it. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. Then on the 15th, uh, I participated in a conference call with the Division II Water Court Clerk um, on trying to set a date between the 50-some opposers. We were trying to come up with a date that everybody could agree on uh, for the... Uh, status hearing and they did pick that finally uh, that will be May 6th it's a phone conference call again uh, May 6th at 9:45 a.m. so I've got the phone number and the access code to join that and I will send that out <clears throat> we had looked at six different dates May 6th was the first possible date July 22nd was the last possible date and uh, the referee picked the sixth, so I thought that was interesting that we were potentially going to be clear out to July 22nd just to have the uh, uh, the status hearing, but they did get it on the calendar for May 6th. So. Um, and Tom? Yes, sir. Who is the water referee? Uh, let me look real quick because I can't quote her name. It's new. Uh, she's a new gal that just took over. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong... It's a great question. I oh, apologize. Just out of curiosity. I knew yeah. Mardell is Mardell. done. Mardell, yeah, for many years. Uh, um, so let me just pull that up. I've seen her name 50 times and she did not pay enough attention. No, I didn't mean to interrupt No, her. that's okay. Um, yes, she did. Sure, I guess I did. <laughs> I didn't bring my notebook, which is where the letters I've gotten from you her can, are. I'll touch base with you later. I yeah, know. I can't. Um, the stuff I've been getting from her has been paper because we're an opposer, so they have to mail everything, and I've got a big notebook. I don't get much in the, in the way of uh, emails from her, so I apologize. Um, let's see. I also, on the 15th, attended the Planning Commission meeting uh, for the discussion of land use. Uh, April 16th, yesterday... I participated in a coffee with the commissioner at the Westcliff Library, hosted by the Chamber of Commerce and the library. Uh, had a, I thought, a great opportunity to visit with some people and, and uh, answer some questions. And then I also attended the CES meeting yesterday afternoon when uh, Boulder Emergency uh, Management Team came down and, and did a presentation on the on the use of the drones, which was interesting, and how they're they're using it. They've spent over $100,000 on their drone program up there in Boulder County. Uh, some of that was grant money, but uh, I think they said their big drone with uh, two cameras on it was thirty-some thousand dollars. So they're dropping a lot of money, but they run. 
ten to twelve fifteen missions a month with that drone on all sorts of stuff not just emergency management but fire police traffic a lot of stuff so it was an interesting interesting presentation so that's kind of what I've been doing to try to stay out of trouble Commissioner Prince well thank you have you done anything this is a contest I just hang around you just hang around well since last meeting um, I attended the uh, Cuscan Health Fair, as did you. Oh, I forgot that. And, uh, yeah, I shook hands with at least 400 <laughs> people who came in. I was a greeter. And the next week I was sick as a dog. <laughs> so, Very good if you take it out of there and not let anybody else have it. Yeah, I mean, it was incredible. You go to the health fair and get sick. Anyway, it didn't stop me from continuing on. Um, I went to the, uh, I attended the tourism workshop on May 8th uh, was an excellent, excellent workshop, I thought, very productive. And then the next morning we had our tourism meeting, which of course I attended. Um, on the, That was the 9th. On the 10th I attended the uh, Friends of Beckwith Ranch. I agree with you. Looks like we got some new impetus behind that. Um, a lot of the um, funding is coming at the moment from uh, the donors from Dallas, and they're very, very anxious to help get the facility back into good shape. It's in pretty good shape now, but I mean, to bring it up and so we could have weddings and events to start using the back with. So I'm very encouraged that that <coughs> gem in our valley uh, is not being deteriorated and it's, we're, we're taking good care of it. Um, on the 11th, uh, of course, I attended the Upper Arkansas Conservancy District meeting. Um, very interesting. I, I don't know what to say. It's just <laughs> incredible. Um, the audacity is the word I'll use. Um, on the 15th, uh, I attended the uh, planning and zoning public meeting to discuss um, zoning issues, rezoning, uh, with an eye on how if this plan that the augmentation plan that the Upper Arc is proposing, how that may affect us. And um, we, uh, they've come up with some very interesting ideas on how to preserve water in the valley. Um, controversial. It's going to take a while to come through and see if it makes sense or not, but it was uh, uh, very informative. They had a meeting again last night, which I went to also just in case there were new questions or issues that were brought up, and there were, so I was very glad I went. So I went to the same <coughs> meeting two times and learned a lot. Um, let's see. Uh, the recycling uh, committee met on the 15th, and uh, uh, very interesting. We have a uh, a grant in for a skid steer, which is a piece of machinery that will help move cardboard and things around. Um, and we may know something by the end of this month, next week or two, uh, whether we're awarded that or not. It would be a great boon for us. Uh, the price of cardboard is way down. When we recycle it, it's $50 a bale. Or is it a ton? If, you, if someone knows, tell me. But it's one of those two, uh, down from a high of 200 um, a year or so ago. Um, unfortunately, plastics are not being accepted by the plastic recyclers at the moment. Um, so when you recycle your plastic bags and things, I hate to tell you this is getting buried. Please continue to do it because the moment we find the outlet for it, we're going to recycle it. So. Um, please don't just put it in the garbage thinking, well, they're burying it anyway, because as soon as we get it, we're going to start doing that. And I don't want you out of that habit. And let's see, other than that, uh, my grandson's birthday is Saturday. I just wanted you to know. <laughs> and uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and I was remiss. I, I don't know why I jumped in the middle of my calendar somewhere. Uh, normally, we go back to the last BOCC meeting and report from there. And so... Uh, I don't think we've met since the 3rd of April, so I was remiss in uh, mentioning that uh, we had a special commissioner meeting on April 3rd, and we met with the Economic Development Corporation and had a, about a two-and-a-half, almost three-hour discussion about broadband and, and where we stand with our Economic Development Administrative Grant with the feds, and so that was informative. Uh, I think we need to continue to do that, which I think we all agreed that that, that was healthy and, 
And of course, as we move forward, uh, depending on the outcome of the EDA grant, uh, we will meet regularly uh, with that group. Uh, on April 5th, I wanted to mention too, I also attended the 4-H speech contest at Tony's Pizza. Uh, just an amazing opportunity to watch them little shavers get up and, mm -hmm. and do their thing. They have, of course, three or four different categories, prepared public speaking. Uh, in the ag education world, we call it extemporaneous. They have a different name for their... Uh, pick a topic, have 10 minutes to prepare a speech, and then they get them give it. The youngest was eight. Uh, I think the oldest one was 14 or 15, and uh, just some amazing performances. Uh, I'm a, I was also amazed at the ability of some of those kids to memorize stuff. They had four or five minute speech memorized, uh, uh, an interpretive reading where they memorized somebody else's material, and so they just had, and had a good crowd, and the kids did really well, and then they had a little pizza thing for them afterwards, and so uh, uh, Sarah Shields was kind of in charge of the uh, speaking contest, and she had some help with Sudzy Rosansky, so uh, Sudzy Benish, sorry. Uh, but anyway, it was a, a very nice evening to watch those kids uh, develop their leadership skills. And then, of course, uh, I attended the health fair as well. Uh, we s helped set up on Friday and then attended the health fair on Saturday. And I got out of there without getting sick because I didn't do anything. I just hid over in the corner and tried to avoid everything. But uh, I think the health fair is one of the best social events yeah. of the year. You get a lot of time to visit with people. So anyway, I was remiss in mentioning <clears throat> those things. So thank you, gentlemen, for allowing me that. Anything else? Come Reminded on. me of one thing. Uh, we, the GOP meeting, it was important for everybody because uh, it, there's a uh, petition going around. If you haven't signed it, sign it. It's, it has to do with the Electoral College uh, issue. And so, uh, it, you know, if you get a chance, please sign it. And then the Lincoln Day dinner was decided, I think, on the 1st of uh, June. Yes, June 1st. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Anything else? Not. We will move ahead. Um, as you probably noticed on the agenda, I inserted the Upper Arkansas Water Conservancy District report. Yeah, and I stuck that report in before the attorney items uh, intentionally because I felt like it would flow from a commissioner's items. Uh, we could have easily included that, but I just didn't want to forget to give that report, and I think I will continue to do that with consent uh, on our me BOCC meeting immediately following the monthly Upper Arkansas Water Conservancy District meeting if that's all right and then whether one two or three of us attend that meeting at least we can come back and give a report to that certainly i've been criticized for not having done that in the past um as an ex officio member so i thought this might be an opportunity to do that so we may just leave it in there um on that agenda all the time but typically it would just be a just that one time but if somebody like today they're having a meeting today so if, <clears throat> if one of us happened to have been able to go to that we could give a me a report back any BOCC meeting so maybe I'll just leave it on that that's agenda for there so that's why I inserted it where I did it. yeah <laughs> if there's nothing to, to report then we'll just skip it and move on is that all right sure Gentlemen, right. very good so um, I don't know if we even name that report that that Upper Arkansas uh, hired G, uh, the USG has to do, it's called a water balance study. So if you hear that phrase or term, you'll know generally what they're talking about. And they're trying to determine if there is room in this Grape Creek alluvial reservoir, underground reservoir, there's room to store water there. And then let it, it there's a lag time, of course, and they're, and they're Scientists are trying to calculate that, uh, how long it would take that water to migrate down to Grape Creek, and then they could introduce that water into the mainstream headed to the Arkansas River. Uh, so they've also got the same project going um, west of Buena Vista on the north of Buena Vista on the west side of the highway. 
uh, there's a property up there that they're doing the same thing. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. I certainly don't understand the science. Uh, I asked them at the meeting, "Can are you going to inject water into the aquifer? And they said, didn't really know, but probably they would let that naturally percolate from a storage vessel, a pond, uh, capture water, store it, let it seep into the aquifer, try to determine how much that water is, what the quantity is, and then try to quantify that coming out uh, into the, to really into the Great Creek <coughs> drainage and down to Lake Deweese and then on to the Arkansas River. So definitely interesting. Um, a lot of intelligent people in the world. I don't happen to be one of them, but uh, it was... Anyway, that's the water balance study. So we'll move on. Attorney items. I attended the two planning commission meetings on Monday and Tuesday. I saw that. Very impressed. I, I even brought my wife last night. She actually was impressed. Uh, that who that was? Yeah, it was my wife with me. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll be a different wife. Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised. It didn't look like the wife that was here yeah, before. Yeah. That's, that's I think where we were headed, right? Um, I uh, assisted uh, Alyssa Livengood, our public health nurse, uh, with preparation of a memorandum of understanding with the Saddle Club to use that facility for emergency purposes. Um, I had an inquiry from Commissioner Flower about the lease with the clinic uh, for, that's where our public health agency is housed right now, and that, if that's something you want to talk to me privately, we can talk about it that way, or if you want to do it as an executive session to get some advice on that, we can we can handle it that way, whatever your decision is. We're going to put that on the April 30th agenda. Can I ask, just hold off until sure. then? Is that acceptable? Uh, it is. I okay. believe so, yes. So let's, uh, Ms. Meredith, yeah. um, can you add that to the April 30th agenda uh, discussion of the lease contract with public health and clinic? Mm-hmm. And actually, rather than put that on the agenda under new business, let's put that as an executive session item. Okay. Um, standard thing, I've met with Jackie Hobby a few times to talk about various uh, zoning violations, matters that are going on. Wrote one letter for her, and she finally doesn't get a response or any action. Then I send out the final threatening letter, although basically I say... You know, Jackie is a lot more threatening than I am. So, um, but usually it gets results, and we get these things settled without having to resort to any litigation. Um, I Shannon contacted me last week after we agreed that we would contract with Riley Johnson to go forward with uh, the Justice Center, the uh, concept design phase. Um, I guess nobody knew where actually where to go from there, so I I contacted Bob Johnson, the one who gave the presentation, and told him you know, to please deal with me, send me the form contract that they have so I can look it over and make recommendations to you, and he said he'd get right on that, so we should have a contract fairly soon to look at and see if it's okay to get started on this. Uh, I saw that, in this again, Commissioner Flower forwarded to me a notice of intent from Mr. Howard. I don't know if that went to the others as I well. It. Okay, but uh, a notice of intent to file a lawsuit. No, I meant to send it to you, I forgot. Um, again, and it's not just Custer County, it'd be Fremont County, it'd be Sol Vista, it'd be a couple of other state agencies. Um, Actually, it would be the greatest thing in the world if he followed through and filed a lawsuit. I would hope that he did because then he opens the door up uh, where he may have lawsuits pending in four or five different jurisdictions, and I can't imagine he's actually going to do that. But if he did, then we'd have, we would have the right to do discovery. We could do depositions. He would have to come out, you know, appear in person, which he doesn't like to do. So I honestly don't expect him to follow through with this. Um, I also talked to yesterday, but I happened to run into a local business owner. I'm not going to identify him right now, but talk to you, because he's also one who's been harassed by Mark Howard, and his case is still going on. And it was interesting, because this is one where there's been a civil rights complaint, and he's had to spend a lot of time responding to it. 
and he he actually got very angry. He contacted the governor's office and was demanding enough that the governor's office got involved and had the director of the Colorado Civil Rights Division call this person personally to talk about it because he was asking the same question all of us have asked who've been harassed by all these filings. Why do you let him keep filing? And the standard answer was that by statute they have to treat every complaint they get the same way, which is ridiculous because they're just enabling him, allowing him to keep on doing this. Uh, anyway, I talked to this gentleman for a while, and we just, in fact, he gave me the name of one other business I wasn't aware of that's been, you know, had a complaint filed against them. And I'm, I'm thinking about getting them together in just a private meeting uh, to talk to them, and because he wanted to, the fellow I talked to on to know if there was some kind of legal action they could take jointly. Um, and he's been in contact with his attorney about this, so I'll I'll talk to them about it a little bit. But it's it's an ongoing thing. He actually hasn't been hassling us too much, other than sending a few innocuous things like that. But I haven't heard anything from him. And I guess he stopped sending things to the court. Finally, I haven't heard anything more about that. Um, let's see. I guess that's everything I wanted to report on today. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, sir. Before we move on, uh, I overlooked uh, an item on the agenda. Uh, I think if it's all right, gentlemen, we'll leave the second item on the agenda there for now. But if we do not, uh, if Miss Poole doesn't show up to have that discussion, then I would at that time probably move to delete that. Is that all right? But I'm afraid if we make that motion now, then five minutes from now she'll... Come in, so I just Maybe she's in Wetmore, like Clint. <laughs> yeah. I checked out Wetmore this morning. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Administrative assistant items? None? Okay, thank you. Public comment? Anybody? Uh, we'll start back there. Yes, ma'am. Would it be appropriate to have the USGS present what they did in Salida to the or is that too, would that be jumping the gun? Uh, I don't know that it would That'd be, be good, jumping the gun. Can um, they dumb it down or not? <laughs> well, you know, the guy did a he great did a job, good job. He really did. There wasn't a lot of over-the-top speakies kind of stuff. It was fairly understandable from at least my perspective. So it's a great suggestion. Um, certainly we can, I can talk to Connor and see if he'd be interested in coming down. Uh, they may, because they're actually being employed by Upper Arc, they may go to Upper Arc and say, hey, we've been requested to go down there because we're employed by and you. That would be a good time for them to go, I think you should do that. That's right. Let's That's communicate. Right. So, uh, yeah, let me make a note of that, and I will contact them or contact Upper Arc and ask them if they can have USGS come down. I suppose if we were willing to pay... Uh, USGS, they might not have to go through Upper Arc, but uh, certainly worth pay. looking into. So, does Upper Arc ever meet down here? Uh, generally, Only no. We belly um, get them there. Obviously, they have. You know, they had a meeting down here with met with the citizens, but typically, no. They meet at their boardroom up in Salida. They were going to send me a link, and I'll send that out. It's a to their. You can't download it. You can look at it in the cloud because it's so big. You don't want to send it in an email, but and then uh, you know we could take a look at it. And, like, I think it's a good idea to set it up. Yeah, we actually uh, Custer County paid a portion of that study. We just made our final payment last month. Uh, I think it was seventeen hundred dollars, seventeen thirty-five or something for that. But so we may have a vested right to call and ask yeah, if come. we can. Good suggestion. Uh, have them come in. It would be a great presentation uh, for the community. So, yes, ma'am. I just wanted to thank you for having the meeting here because I've never been here before. Uh, That's why we did it. <laughs> yeah, great point. I want to ask, too, while we're in public comment, who has not been here before? I know there's several. So, uh, yeah, so two, four, six, yeah. Good. She knew which door to come in, though. I just guess. Well, you can go any, any door. Yeah. Any door will get yeah. yeah. Further public comment? Yes, sir. That's what I just, I wanted to thank you guys for having your meeting out here and ask that you would consider doing it once a year. 
And you might right. do it even twice. Okay. Um, <laughs> if you have hamburgers. Donut speak, okay? It's <laughs> <laughs> a good thing JC came. Yeah, we are going to bring yeah, they are just for lunch. So if you're good. Hang yeah, and thank you for mentioning that. These guys uh, uh, visited, we talked last week, and they said we might as well do a little hamburger lunch afterwards. So you're certainly, we encourage you to stay. They've gone to the effort and uh, expense of providing that for us, so I would encourage everybody to stay. And we've got a couple latecomers coming, uh, Jackie Hobby and and uh, Kristen from uh, the assessor's office are out doing a couple of septic inspections, and then she was going to come set in on the rest of the meeting that she could, and she asked if they would have <laughs> enough if they stayed, and I said, yeah, as far as I know, should have plenty. So, yes, sir. A question. I don't know anything about water in the valley. But if there's a lot of interest in it, do we have any control? Does Custer County have any control? Or is all individual owners who have control? Or That's a great question. Control? Yeah. The county really does not have control over water and water issues other than representing our citizens, you know, as far as being involved with Upper Arc. Uh, that is, most of the water issues are handled by the state water courts uh, if it gets to that point. But water rights are really a individual yeah. right to somebody that owns water. A distinction that we probably need to mention from time to time because I think people don't know or maybe misunderstand, well owners are not water right owners. So we all, if you live out in the county, probably have a well. Uh, <clears throat> that is not a water right. The state allows you the Permit. Uh, a permit to drill and use that water, but you really don't own that water. Uh, you couldn't sell that water to somebody else. It's it's for use tied to a piece of property. So it's uh, it's easy to say, well, I have a right to that water. Well, you do have a right to that water, but you don't have ownership of water. And, and in the courts, a well, water right is ownership of water. It can be transferred, sold, uh, <coughs> given to an estate, will, whatever. It is a tangible right. But people that own a domestic well, that is not the case. Yes, sir. If, if I may follow up, Mr. Giacomo, um, the county pays a fee to Upper Arkansas on an annual basis, something under $50,000 a year. Um, and that's for our participation in Upper Ark. The county itself owns no water rights, the county. However, as Chairman Flower just mentioned, because our constituency owns a lot of it, we've kind of taken the lead to help the discussion. I don't want to say fight, but the controversy that we're in at the moment about this new um, augmentation plan they're trying to impose on uh, Custer County. So we've been very, very active in terms of what are we what can we as the county administrators do to help the water right owners? Okay. Um, what's best for the county is what we're looking for. As, as Commissioner Flowers said a minute ago, we're the headwaters of the water that goes downstream. Our water comes from the mountains, and everybody else depends on it flowing downstream. Unless you have pumps and stuff, it doesn't go uphill. So everybody wants to get their hands on our water. And... There's just not, we don't know how much water there is. And that's part of the study that's going on. And we're talking about hydrologists trying to determine what kind of water we have <clears throat> underground. Can we quantify what it is? So without say, with I just want to make a, a little, I want to impress upon you a little bit more that it's not a county issue. It's a major county issue. It's just that we don't have a particular right in it. But we're leading the charge to figure out what's going on and do what's best for the county that we can within the law. And then, you know, we may have no choice. The, the water district court may turn around and say, we approve the Upper Arkansas Conservancy District filing, which is from a, uh, an augmentation plan in the county that's not there now. And that gives them the right to, I don't want to say control the water, but it gives them the right to augment water, which is really swapping water. They can sell it. They're in the it's a business, there's no doubt about it. So this is a major, major operation. The three commissioners are involved in uh, our attorney is 
heavily involved in it. All the water rights owners are. So please come to the meetings that we have often to discuss where do we go from here. Let me make one quick comment on that just because it would be all our perspective. Uh, it's even bigger than that. The only influence we have, which is a little influence that Jay just mentioned, is on that board for that particular company. It's a government agency in this case. But there's everybody, you, you mentioned it, everybody up here is free to sell their right to use the water for beneficial use, meaning the, the ranchers that own that, um, to anybody. So, so it's bigger than just that one organization. So that's why it's important to understand and, and incentivize people to, to try to store water up here, keep it in the valley, those kinds of things beyond even what Upper Arc's done. It's bigger than that. Yeah, I'll get to you in just a second, sir. Go ahead, Wilson. Uh, what, so what, from uh, Upper Arc's viewpoint, what do they think they're giving the citizens of Custer County in return for the 50000 well, uh, <coughs> representation certainly uh, on any water court cases that would actually go to court within the district that may or may not include Custer County, but we're part of a district. So they, in representing that district, uh, they certainly function as a representative taking cases to court. Uh, they have uh, water attorneys on staff. Uh, hydrologists, engineers, all of that stuff. So they they believe they can serve the the people in the district in a more efficient manner than individuals in that district could. And I believe that. I mean, it is That's super a expensive. expensive. Uh, <laughs> you know, they could fight somebody selling their water out of here, and we don't want it sold, and you know something like that could happen. Yeah. Remember, I said it's bigger than just upper. Yeah. yeah, it has happened. So. Um, so it's kind of an insurance policy for the county. It's right. like a co-op, yeah. more money yeah. and numbers. Sure. Yeah, and I, we don't need to digress a lot, but uh, uh, Upper Arc has certainly... We need a grant for that door? Indicated, <laughs> indicated many times... <laughs> yeah. uh, Upper Arc's indicated more than once that they were very responsible for the, the way the water court case turned out on the H2O ranch. Mm -hmm. uh, they did not file that case. Uh, they got in late on the deal. Um, but they influenced it. They did. Uh, they were definitely okay, yeah, the, that's, that's yeah. Right, yeah. So anyhow, go ahead, sir. Yes. I just got a question. Is there a specific entity or group of entities that are making a move to try to acquire more water out of this area and out of the ark? City of Fountain, the uh, city of Pueblo, the city of Denver, That's the right. farmers in Lamar, uh, the big commercial groups want to buy water everywhere. Yeah. And so uh, you can't blame a rancher up here that has water right and he's going to retire. He can right, sell it to anybody. Money. I, give right. I worked for yeah. Colorado Springs Utilities for okay. 10 years, so I'm just yeah. trying to figure out if they're making another call for trying to acquire more yeah. water. It's uh, always a pressure. I'm not aware of any entities that are actively pursuing that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, further public comment? All right, thank you. Hearing none, we'll move on. Unfinished business, gentlemen? No. Nor do I. Okay, we'll move on. New business. Um, in, our, in an effort to maintain uh, transparency and uh, to set a tone of involvement, we allow public comment on all of our new items of business or, <coughs> old item, or unfinished items, if we happen to have any. Uh, prior to a uh, vote being taken by the Board of County Commissioners. So uh, I will allow public comment at the end of the discussion period of the commissioners uh, prior to taking a vote on any of that, so uh, if there's an action item. Our first item of business, uh, on new business today, is consideration of hiring a water attorney. Uh, I would defer to Councillor. We have asked uh, Clint to... Uh, maybe give us a recommendation uh, of some individuals we can consider hiring to explore the options that we as a Board of County Commissioners have moving forward in this water issue. Well, I, have, I got a few names. Um, when we met a couple of weeks ago, Randy Rusk was there and I had a private conversation with him. He's used a, a water attorney out of Colorado Springs for 25 years and he speaks very highly of him. Um, 
Munson, I think it was Steve, Steve Munson. Steve Munson. Uh, I haven't contacted any of these individuals yet. I just knew on to some direction. Since <clears throat> if there is a court action, Custer County isn't going to be involved in it. You want an attorney for advice. Correct. Uh, and Randy <clears throat> thought this attorney would be great for that. He said maybe not so good if you actually had to go to court and have somebody who's you know, as, as great in a trial court setting um, but for advice he thought that this is somebody who's very knowledgeable about water in this area has worked with upper arc for many years jay sent me a name which i forwarded on to you and i've forgotten the name now but uh that was a person with, and was she out of denver i think yes in denver. all right and then just this morning bill gave me a name of another uh, lawyer john henderson who does he actually live here but he he's practices. a resident here he has some business in Denver from doing something but he's work he has a place here okay and water that, he's a water attorney and that's not another individual I don't know any of these the ones that I did know as I told you last time around are all dead now so <laughs> it's hard to ask yeah so, so is Doc Holliday yeah <laughs> um I think for what you want just anybody that's had some experience here would be more than adequate to give you the kind of guidance you need and information. Um, and my guess, and I haven't checked on this lately, and I'm, I may be behind the times, but I would be guessing you're looking at maybe $350 an hour or so for you know paying for this. So the $4,000 that you voted to expend on this, uh, maybe we may want to, if you want somebody to come down and speak and, you know, in a public meeting, that's one thing. If we otherwise, it might be better to go to that attorney's that's office. Well, I think you need to. This is just us talking now. Uh, get some prices from these guys and some some kind of a resume from them that we know what we're dealing with. Look, whether he's a trial guy or uh, whatever. You mentioned several things that would be useful to know before we select one. Well, I would think. <clears throat> and the trial part, I didn't think was really. I don't think that's necessary, yeah, but I was just using that as an example. Yeah. But I can certainly contact the to tell them what we're looking for and and if somebody would be willing to work with us and and if you wanted to go up and meet at the convenience of this attorney in Colorado Springs, you know, would be now if Mr. Henderson would meet with us here, that would be it. Um you said you sent it to all of us. I don't see the name from the, the you forwarded. Did I'm sorry, because the one that Jay sent to me I Veronica think I, Sperling. That's a, yeah. Okay. And I, I think I just, I guess I just forwarded it on to Tom. I'm sorry about that. So there, those are the three names I've got right now. I can certainly get some more, but I checked with some of the, I mean, online, I looked at some of the big law firms in Denver. They have their own water law departments you know, with attorneys. And I looked at their credentials. And obviously, there are a lot of experienced lawyers that do this. Mm -hmm. no, recommendation. Um, suggestion. I, I think for what we need, I think, as you said, a competent water attorney can answer questions like, what are our options? Can the county do their own augmentation plan? Can we opt out of the Upper Arkansas if that was a choice that, I mean, are, are these even options that are available? So I would think the three names you have probably are sufficient. And, you know, I would defer to you to Get some speak stuff. with them, tell them the kind of thing we're looking for. <clears throat> You know, come back to us and say this guy is or this lady is X amount of dollars, and I think they'll be fine. And right. you know, I'm fine with that. I I feel very comfortable with your recommendation. Um, and I guess if you're, I assume we would like to have this information before the status conference. So if we, if, if I'm going to find somebody, I'll I'll do that right away, and I'll get back to you. I'll notify all of you of what I've got and Great. what the, what dollar amount we're looking at, and uh, see if we can. Get something set up with one, but I'll I'll give you the option. Of course, I'll just get this information from these three. Um, you know, people have asked me, well, why don't I just handle this as the county attorney? And as I've explained, yeah, I'm a lawyer, but it's like in, it's like in the medical profession, you've got you know brain surgeons and you've got proctologists. I'm the proctologist. <laughs> Yeah, we don't want a problem operating on your brain. Yeah. So I mean, we need somebody who's got expertise. This is a very complex area, and I don't have any expertise in the area of water. Or I'll get some information for you. Well, I come at it from a little different slant. Uh, 
I would like to see us today to consider hiring Steve Munson. I take Randy's recommendation very seriously. Uh, and here's, there's a couple of reasons that I say that. One is that, just as I stated, uh, I think if Randy recommends that person um, after dealing with him for over 20 years, I think we should take that into consideration. The second thing is, uh, I was prepared and hope that we still can hire an attorney or give the authority to our attorney to try to hire an attorney so that we can meet and get some information prior to this May 6th date. That Those are the two driving forces. Uh, I certainly would not be opposed to hire a local attorney uh, if we felt that he was the best choice. Again, I don't want to be irresponsible and say I don't care about anything else. Let's just hire this guy. So I don't mind going through the due process, but I'd sure like to put a fire under it and try to have it done uh, by the first part of next week. I don't know. We can certainly have a special meeting to make that decision. Um, or we could, our problem is going to be if we do not have a special meeting, then we will not make a decision until April 30th. And then that gives us... Is it possible to do it via left. the uh, email or phone? And not not legally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I won't be here today next week. I'm going to have Easter with my kids. Um, <clears throat> May 6th is a status hearing. Yes. No decisions have made a status hearing. No. Right. It's just a discussion on where are we, who's filing, you know, where the... So I'm less concerned about having the overall goal or answers to questions that the county may have, I'm less concerned about having that in hand at May 6th, on May 6th. To me, it's long term. I mean, if, if we want to make major changes, and, and I'm certainly not advocating anything, but I'd like to know if it's even a possibility. Can we tell Upper Arkansas, we do not want to be part of your conservative district, we're going to form our own, or whatever. Um, that's options I would like to know that are available to us, and then we and then we could start talking about does it make sense, does it not? I mean, it's no sense talking about something that we don't even know if it's available. So I'm less concerned about um, having this done immediately. Um, I certainly agree with you. Um, Randy Russ spoke to me about Mr. Munson also. He sounded like an excellent attorney. Looking at the website of a uh, lady in uh, Denver, and I don't know the local gentleman, but if they're a water attorney, the fundamental questions we need answers to, I think any good water attorney is going to be able to say, fine. So I'm less concerned about the urgency of this than you are, uh, Mr. Chairman, respectfully. So I would, <clears throat> I'm just, I don't feel that urgency as you do. Okay. I'm, I'm, I agree with Jane. Uh, I don't know. I know Randy very well. Been meeting with him regularly, and he's talked about Steve Munson with me. And I sounds like a good guy. Uh, but uh, this other guy, he's got local water interests up here. He's a water attorney. Has a business in Denver. It's worth considering to get a perspective. <clears throat> he would have a different outlook probably than Steve does. Why don't if if this is all right with you, I could reach out to all these three today find out who's available. Um, some of them may say, I'm so busy right now, I don't have time to meet with you. <laughs> find out what the hourly rate would be to, to work with you uh, and <clears throat> get back to you, get you some information, hopefully later today or tomorrow, and okay. we can go forward from there. You know what, and that brings up a good point. Uh, that we don't have to hire just one guy. If we get another perspective, it depends on the money. Absolutely. You know, uh, this is a big deal, and so we ought to try our best to get Right. Most options we can find. But if you want, if, if that's all right to do it that way, I can get you some information right away, and you can uh, can act on it. Okay. Yeah. Certainly, if we were hiring a trial attorney, this would be a whole another conversation. Right. We're after some information, right. so yeah. Then you I bring in Jerry Spence, throw a dart at the wall, and pick one, and probably get our <laughs> question answered. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. That's fine. And, 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 and I. I would like you to make a recommendation. These are of the three we spoke to. This is the one I feel most comfortable with. I, I mean, that's a trust here. I, you know, I will contact all of them and try to get some information for you right away. Thank you, sir. What is it, 10 days to the next meeting or whatever it is? Or, no, it's 30th, longer than that. Or is it two weeks? 30th. 30th. Yeah. Okay, thank okay. you, sir. Anything else? No. All right, appreciate that. Um, so. 
Yes. yes. I, I hate to be rude, but those donuts are just sitting there. Hold them up. <laughs> well, I can hey, tell you, I am not going to eat heard. one of them, should so they, should, they they should pass be passed around. Or, yes. Or should they be? Should we have a donut break? Or <laughs> that's I, not a bad idea. I mean, if you're going to have food after, have to have you some don't want donuts. Yeah, we don't want to wait too late to eat donuts because thank you, because sir. I appreciate hampers. that. That's right. We don't want to ruin our hampers. Yeah, we need to come here every day. That's what I can tell you. It's getting awful hard to sit there and look. We need some, we need some bad paper. You got some paper towels, guys? Or something? Uh, with consent, we'll take a five minute recess. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You're welcome. We got most of them taken care of, so you're welcome to ease up here and continue the feeding frenzy. Won't bother anybody. We could slide them down, maybe, but uh, you may sleep now. that's right. So our next you item of business was consideration of a letter of support for uh, the San Isabel Land Trust. On your agenda, it's Sand Isabel. That was a typo that got by us until yeah. Commissioner Kanda pointed it out this morning. Uh, but San Isabel Land Trust had called and asked if. Uh, <clears throat> we would consider writing a letter of support for an upcoming grant. Uh, she did not provide us that information, so at this time, gentlemen, I would, uh, by consent, ask that we bypass that and move on. Move on. Okay. All right, good. Uh, airport courtesy car update. Um, maybe between all of us we can get the update in place for the potential courtesy car. Certainly not a courtesy car, but... The airport board is in the process of uh, looking into developing a program and process that they could have a vehicle or vehicles out here to, u to be used by the public when they fly in uh, in an effort to get those people into town. Uh, I can report to you on behalf of the commissioners at least that the two vehicles that came off of the inventory for the sheriff's department uh, were rolled over to the inventory for the airport board. Uh, one of those vehicles is now ready to come out here, so you guys, if you want to move forward with that, we're going to store them here. Obviously, we won't use them as a courtesy car until that plan has been uh, approved by the Board of County Commissioners, but uh, they were setting in an unsecured area up there by the Sheriff's Department, and so we felt like we might as well get them down here and get them uh, a little more secured. So the last conversation I had with Mike Halpin, the one vehicle was done. We put new license plates on it. We, we changed. Yet. Oh, the first one. On that. Oh, I thought the first one we had done. Okay. I need money. <laughs> Get it from the airport board. All right. And there it comes. The, there's the hook. I thought Bob. Did Bob walk? Where did Bob go? He, he was supposed to pay her. The proverbial hook. We need money. So there's Bob. Uh, and I did speak, Miss Kelly, with Mike Halpin about the second vehicle, and he was going to get the registration and bring that to you. I'm assuming he hasn't done that yet. No. Okay. But the other vehicle is done, uh, right. and it's ready. So we'll, we will get new license plates on it. Those vehicles are registered to the county, but they're filed through the individual groups or organizations so that if somebody said, oh, I need to check on a sheriff department vehicle, they don't go through every vehicle the county owns. There's a file in the courthouse for the sheriff's department, so they can just go through. They'll be the same with the airport board. Okay. So uh, they're, they're really registered to the county, but they're filed under the airport board. The other thing you were working was the insurance, right? Right. We're, we are, we're preliminary with our rules and regs and that, so yeah. we are yeah. making that. Yes, sir. How much money does she need? I don't oh, know. Uh, I would guess less than five bucks. Three dollars and seventy-eight cents. <coughs> for, we'll for each vehicle. <laughs> well, that's for each, so that's, Bobby. Yeah. That's for each vehicle. <laughs> and then for each county commissioner. <laughs> and then for each airport board member. I mean, it's going to go up, right? So, yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 So, Bob, I have a question for you, because I have another registration that I think you gave me, Tom, for a 2001 Ford, a blue that you no longer have, right? That's correct, correct. Is it, did you sell it, or? The county commissioners took it. <laughs> what did you do it? Several years ago. 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is that what you're saying? All right. What well, is she doing with the registration? I don't know. I have no idea. What uh, and yeah. we'll just for take the record, it off. no, I did yeah. not give that to you, so it must have been Mike or somebody. I, okay. I'm not, I wasn't right. aware of that. So. Okay. The last time I saw it, it was at the county shop block. The blue one? Oh, it was. So maybe they didn't get rid of it altogether. Right. Okay. <clears throat> I'll check that out. But you guys don't have it. No. Okay. No, I brought that uh, that registration to y'all because I don't know what to do. Oh, so Bob maybe did. that's a, yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. So that's what I have to report. If you guys have something else, I, I just thought we better put that on the agenda and have that conversation you. so you know where we're at. <clears throat> so as soon as we get that vehicle plated, it could come down here then. Okay. Okay. Um, Somebody asked me when I walked in here this morning, maybe it was Kelly, if there's an airplane in every hangar. No. Okay. I never thought to ask that. Some I don't know hangars there have are. more than one airplane, yeah. though. I've been out to see right. those. Yeah. I don't know what made me think of that, but. Uh, okay, we will move on. Uh, anything else on the airport? Okay, consideration of the Tourism Board member recommendation. Next item of business. Let me pull. Can I take the lead on that? Uh, you certainly may if you'd like to, yes. Uh, um, I forwarded to both of the commissioners a letter from April 9th from the Tourism Board. Um, I also attended their um, meeting when this was discussed. Um, sometimes some of the things that we're asked to do as commissioners are difficult, and this is one of them. Um, the Tourism Board has unanimously recommended uh, that they would like to remove one of the members of the Tourism Board, Angie Audubur. Um, my feeling is that we give every board responsibility and authority, and if they feel that that's an action that they want to take because it's betterment of the board, and since this decision was unanimous by the board members, I'll move that we um, remove Angie Audubur uh, from the Tourism Board effective immediately. I'll second so we can talk about it. It's been moved and seconded to uh, remove Angie Arter Byrne from the Tourism Board discussion. Uh, I would, first of all, sir, with all due respect, uh, the vote was five to one. It was not a unanimous vote. Uh, uh, I was there. I do not remember. I don't believe Miss Arterburn voted to remove herself. I, I could be wrong. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> you are correct. I stand corrected. Thank you. Okay. I stand corrected. Good, good, good. Okay. Further discussion? Uh, I read the letter as well um, that was uh, authorized by the five board members. And certainly uh, have some feelings about this. I think the, that the tourism board members have some valid points. From my perspective, I've sat in on the majority of the tourism board meetings since I became commissioner, have missed a few. Uh, but I feel like I have sat in on enough of those meetings to have a feel of kind of what has been going on. Uh, I think the Tourism Board continues to struggle, uh, and I think that for several different reasons. Uh, those would be my opinions, um, may or may not be factual, but certainly uh, have my opinions about that. Um, I have supported Angie being on this Tourism Board from day one of me becoming a commissioner. And primarily the reason for that is because of her background, depth of knowledge, uh, and involvement in the tourism, not only the tourism business, but the business community of our county uh, ever since I've lived here anyway uh, for 30-some years. So I don't take lightly um, problems that the tourism board have with her. I, I recognize and give validity to that. I'm not saying that you don't have a, a point there. I just feel like... Uh, that in spite of your uh, accusations, I think she has been a, a valid uh, part of the Tourism Board, but I also understand uh, where the members of the Tourism Board that signed the letter are coming from. Uh, certainly, the, from my perspective, 
any board that functions under the county's umbrella in Custer County serves at the pleasure of the Board of County Commissioners. This is a political deal. That's why members are approved by county commissioners before they're seated on a board. It's politics. Uh, there's no way around that. I think and I, I believe we've made this very clear to the Tourism Board that uh, one of the things that makes the Tourism Board different than the other boards, Airport Board, uh, Fair Board, is that they are financed directly from a lodging tax uh, from our county. So I as a commissioner feel like I have an additional responsibility to uh, provide some oversight and, and involvement in that because of that very thing. So it's ranged from 15000 to I think last year was $54,000 in uh, tax money collected by the state and then returned to the tourism board. Uh, so I just feel uh, an extra burden to pay attention to what is going on with the tourism board. Certainly I'm involved in the fair board just from the agricultural background. but. Uh, so I, I certainly uh, understand where uh, the members of the Tourism Board are coming from. Other comments, gentlemen, or discussion? Yeah, I got a few. Um, we all have a different perspective. Each of us have come from different backgrounds. Uh, so Tom, I understand what you said. It's not politics like in the classic sense. It's a, it's a leadership issue. <clears throat> we are charged with, as our, in our elected positions here, to lead this county to, to the best that we can. And it's true, you all report to us. And that's a, not a political thing, that's a, that's, a, that's a leadership authority thing. So, uh, and it's important that our teams work together and that each board needs to function efficiently and well. And this board has had a lot of problems, you, you know, in growth, growth pains from what I've seen in the background. Angie, you've been in the board for forever, right? How long have you been? What's your... Officially, I was on at the very beginning. After that, I never was on the board. I helped um, behind the scenes or as I was mm -hmm. asked. It was probably two or three years. I wasn't as involved because of family health issues. Um, and then I didn't really come back on until last year. Okay. And uh, so... so but you've been, I guess the point is, you've, you've been engaged, you, and you, just right. like Tom said, you've got a lot of experience. And we look for, these boards are open meetings, by the way, and we look for any input from the community to help that board efficiently manage the money they're accountable for. And so, and from my point of view, it's, it's important that we set up a board with good members and and like you said, Jay, um, with the authority to execute it, and, and uh, unless we see somebody, something really illegal, immoral, and unethical going on, then we have the immediate authority to pull you right out as, as we can. So uh, uh, I think that it's probably for the best that you take a break, personally, uh, from my perspective, uh, and not to ignore the board, but I would, I would uh, want you to to continue to, to be an advisor potentially or a member of uh, FICIO or whatever the, they, their, their, their others are. I've had a lot of experience with teams in my career and we can't continue uh, to have issues continue to fester around what somebody might think or even your, your background, you know, if something worked in the past uh, and somebody brings it up that's new, uh, they need to know the, the details and have some experience putting their ideas together, as well as yours. Um, but, uh, and maybe it's time to take a break, is, is what, what I'm feeling. I've watched a bunch of these meetings, uh, and also uh, a few of the boards that I've attended with you all and, and the discussion with people. So that's sort of my feeling right now. I, I uh, uh, you know, we have to, we have to back our boards unless there's a big issue, and I don't see that yet. Uh, with uh, the new group uh, coming together. And we've got to get that team together. That's my feeling right okay. uh, I would respond to one thing, and certainly, Commissioner Candy, I truly hope you understand that this comment is with all due respect. Mm -hmm. um, I, 
I cannot remember you sitting in a tourism board meeting. Um, I have. And observed the behaviors and the attitudes that I behave, that I've observed. Now, I'm, oh, that's true. Uh, I have I have sat so, in several meetings, but I and I have sat in the uh, workshops. Um, but yes, you're, certainly you're, you, you were in a workshop. Yeah, but in, and I have um, I, I don't think you were in the meeting I sat in. Um, I was in the back of the room at one. But they it was a different. It's been some time ago. But I've talked to you know I've seen each of you all in action. So I'm basing it on both of those, Tom. Okay. I think Commissioner Cannon, I'm going to speak for him. I'm just stating the facts here. Commissioner Cannon and I have said in numerous meetings of the Tourism Board, uh, of which you were not there. Mm -hmm. uh, you mean Prince. And you I mean can Prince. tell you, you mean Prince. Prince. what did I say? That's true. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Prince, and I have said in on those meetings. I uh, okay. apologize for me speaking there. And uh, I have yet to set in a tourism board meeting that I've not been embarrassed, that I have not wished there were other people that weren't there to witness the behaviors, uh, the attitudes, uh, just, I have not been pleased with the tourism board. There is no question about that from my perspective, and I want that to be on the record. There's no sense of me walking around whining and complaining about stuff if I can't sit in a public meeting and express my feelings and attitudes about that. Um, again, I will say that I believe there are some credible accusations in this letter. I've witnessed that myself. Um, can't deny that. I don't know if, can't speak for Angie, I certainly don't look at this as taking a break. You are being railroaded off of this board. They're not interested in having you involved in this board at any way, shape, or form based on their letter. So I don't look at it as Commissioner Canada does that maybe it's time for you to take a break. Uh, I look at it that this board does not want you on their board. That's the way I look at it. I think that's pretty simple by reading the letter. So Let me agree with uh, you on, on one point, Tom. Go ahead, sir. You, you, you are correct. Uh, uh, it is an embarrassment. I've, I've been embarrassed by the past boards and the past actions that, I've had, that I have seen and that I've heard about. Uh, but I, you know, and I don't, I don't know that statement of railroading them off. Maybe that's strong. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is true. I don't. Uh, but what we've got to do is figure out how to make make it function. So if you're if it, if you're really that concerned, maybe we have a bigger issue. Oh, I. So okay. something to consider in the in the in the later date. But uh, I don't know. Um, Jay, you started this off, and you've had the same embarrassing. <laughs> You know, this is very difficult. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you what, I, I've been an Angie supporter from day one, and she knows I am. When things were tough, she'd talk to me, and I would do my best to help. And I'll tell you why, because I'm very loyal. Mm -hmm. When this board, before the current board's in place, we cleaned house a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did. We had one member on this board, Angie. Angie. She could have thrown her hands up and said, what am I tearing the hair out of my head for? She didn't. She stood there and she kept it going <clears throat> during a very, very difficult time. And I admired her for that also. And I admire that a lot. And I, that's why when the question came up about should Angie be an ex officio member, because this was a question that was up at one point, or a full board member, and she even agreed to be an ex officio member, <clears throat> I felt... No, you ought to be a voting member because you deserve it from your past action mm -hmm. when the tourism board was in total disarray. Um, there are from very, as you know, there are some very, very strong personalities on the tourism board. Uh, sometimes to the point where I think decisions are made by personality, not by people maybe being ashamed to raise their hand and go, I don't agree with you yeah. to whoever's speaking. They may be concerned about doing that. So I think s some decisions could be railroaded. I don't really know. But there's a functioning board right now. Sorry. Not. And there's a phone ringing. Right in the middle. Okay. So, but there is a functioning board now. I think the progress that's being made is very good. 
They're working with a company in, is it Buena Vista? <coughs> where, where is yes. Buena Vista? Yes, yeah, I just wasn't sure where they were. Um, that seems to be helping a lot. Um, so I think now that the board is functioning, if there is a, pers a single personality conflict, do you change the whole board and keep the one person, or do you let them go? But here's, that's not, I'm not even going to go that's there. That's why I brought Here, it up. I'm going to go back to the first thing I said, because I really believe this is truth. If I'm giving you, and when I say you, any board in this county, any commission in this county, I'm giving you the authority and the responsibility, you make a recommendation to me that you feel is in the best interest of your board or your commission, mm -hmm. and it's not detrimental to the county, I'm going to back it, whether I like it or not, because I'm not your leader in this. Okay. Now, I know Commissioner Lyle is going to say, yes, I am. And I am, ultimately. <laughs> it all call, falls back to us. But I want you to function as best you can, and I think they are functioning. So as much as I really am, um, this is difficult for me, I, I have to support what they want because this is what they're asking for. I, I have no way else of doing this. Well, that's where I was. I am not going to say, but, oh, I know a really great person. Oh, by the way, Mr. Jones, Mr. Smith, whatever your name is, you're now on the board because I like you. You're my friend. That's not the way to do the things. Point. We let the board make the decisions or make the decisions that they recommend to us. And unless they're just so far out of line with what I feel that I'm hired to do as a commissioner, I feel I need to support them. And that's where I am right now. Yeah, you make... Great point. Good point. Um, I, I look back at those times when we were trying to rebuild the tourism board uh, after dismantling it for behaviors that this this board did not agree with, and we're not going to tolerate. It. Very bad. Uh, it was pretty evident about that, obviously, uh, because we did uh, go back to the bear minimum of one person on the tourism board, which was Angie. Uh, and so I think my perspective is probably a little different. Uh, I do not think we're, our tourism board is functioning like they should be. Uh, are they hiring companies to do work? Absolutely. And I think those companies are, are doing a good job. Um, I'm kind of caught between that same gray area that I think you're talking about, Commissioner Prince, is uh, do we follow recommendations of our board or not? Uh, I'm probably leaning towards doing that very thing because we selected, we, we didn't select, but we uh, encouraged people to submit their names to serve on a tourism board, and I think uh, that they have a, almost a right for us to give more than consideration, give serious consideration of their uh, recommendations. That doesn't mean in the world I live in that anything's a slam dunk. That's uh, true. That's the problem. That's why we were elected and other people weren't. We're sitting here to make those decisions, and you just never know how those play out. Um, so... <clears throat> I, I think there's some base issues with the tourism board and the people that are on it. Uh, therefore, gentlemen, I will move to amend your motion, respectively, to include the name of Debbie Adams to be removed as a member of the tour, tourism board, effective immediately. If you care to second that, we can have a discussion. If you don't, you know the results of that. Is there a second to the amendment? Do I hear a second? No. If not, the amendment dies. Further discussion on the main motion? Yes, ma'am. You said it accurately, Commissioner, that you gentlemen asked us yes. to submit our names and you approved of us. So as Commissioner Prince said, you need to back us up. I don't agree. We don't need to do anything. We're the Board of County Commissioners and if we feel I'm taking just a little offense and please forgive me. It is our responsibility to make the hard decisions and run the county 
and a lot of it is delegate. Our decision is to delegate it to different boards and committees. And we delegated the tourism to a tourism board. I don't think we need to back you up. I feel that we've given you authority and responsibility. And from sitting through many, many, many meetings, I can understand why this letter was submitted. Do I agree with it or not? Not necessarily. We sit here and we argue all the time. Just now, the chairman made a motion that died. And, you know, he understands. That's, there's three of us that make these decisions. And will that question come back up in a month or two or three? Possibly. And we'll review it at that time again. I think when it comes to membership, your best, you can best tell what's letting your group, the tourism board, function at its optimum level. And if you have come as a unified front saying that we feel we could do better without a person, I would, have, I would respect that. Um, so we don't have to. I'm, I'm sorry the way I'm saying this to you, but it's our job. For the comment, if you remember that, um, and I think it's in our bylaws that unless there's a reason for you not to take our recommendation, you're going to take our recommendation. And that's true. But whatever reason we have is sufficient. Ms. Arburn. Um, I just wanted to say. I respect and I thank you for what all you guys had to say. It is what it is, and um, sometimes things kind of come around in a different way later on. And I think you guys ought to just, after if no more discussion, just I'm I'm fine with the decision. And I respect that um, it has gone on. There's always more to the story, but that's not the issue. If I can respond, I have publicly, on the record, multiple times thanked mm -hmm. you for what you have done. Right. And regardless how this vote comes out, I thank you again for what you have done publicly. Okay, I have one last comment based on what we've all just gone through. I personally was on the in the in the heat of the battle on this whole thing originally. The last board was very dysfunctional, and they were battling all over the place. And, and in my view, not not really managing it the way it was set up to be. Uh, and that was one of the issues we had. And Angie, you, you came through the, the fire on all that. I, I, you know, I know that. But and you all, the new board, it's important to grab a hold and grow. You all are on notice. You heard it. Uh, it you guys have got to come together in a uh, collegial, cooperative, listen to everybody's idea without shooting them down before they get a chance to talk kind of an attitude. I know that it happens and that happens to me sometimes it's just emotional. So uh, I think it's, uh, a, and Jay was right, uh, we don't have to take your recommendation. That's what we're paid to understand and how did that recommendation evolve and what is it about. So uh, uh, I really uh, respect you all for being here and pleading your case and doing, because you're right, that, that was a tough letter and it was hard. It was and tough made for us it, too. I know. And so, we understand. I know, I, I understand why I'm going through this, uh, Peggy. It's, uh, we do understand that. And what's even harder, and, and, and we've talked about this as our job, it's the only job we've had where we, we have to have these discussions in public and that makes it even harder uh, because that's the nature of the job. We work for you guys. So, um, so this is our, our uh, professional opinions here based upon uh, where we are, and, and so we want to see you go ahead and grow. <coughs> my, my point of view. So let's, I appreciate uh, your uh, professionalism, Angie. And Thank you. As well as the board. Sorry. Further public comment? Yes, sir. Uh, it's into my business, and I have attended a few meetings, and I'm summing up like it takes more than one person to run off. So, and you may have done some things, said some things, maybe she shouldn't, but I witnessed other people are doing the same. So, that's right. Further public comment? 
I certainly don't want to use this pulpit as a whipping post, but I will say this publicly and to the tourism board. We have two members here, uh, three counting Angie today. Uh, I don't have a big axe to grind with the tourism board. I will not watch this tourism board function the way you have been as a commissioner and not attempt to do something about that. Uh, I heard what you said uh, about we asked you to be on the tourism board. I, I hear that. I understand that. In my opinion, the people and the personalities that are on that tourism board right now were not represented when we appointed those people. I have sat there and I've watched that. I think people have changed once they got on that tourism board. Uh, why, I couldn't begin to guess. But as a commissioner, uh, I, I, I will not sit by and watch this rude, arrogant behavior, lack of leadership, improper parliamentary procedure in dealing with this tourism board. It's not a social club. Uh, Commissioner Prince has already spoke to the tourism board about this drinking thing and got blown off. I couldn't believe the response to that. Uh, you are a board representing this county. Uh, if I hear of another let me rephrase that. If another person comes to me and says they were embarrassed while attending a tourism board meeting because of the drinking, uh, I will raise hell with everybody involved. That's, that's the end of that deal. Uh, can there be drinking socially? Yes. If you are in a formal board meeting, I would certainly expect behavior and professionalism way beyond that. If there is a workshop in somebody's home, to me, that's a little different deal. But in a meeting, uh, I, I won't condone it. I don't believe that there's ever been drinking at a meeting, Commissioner. I believe that was a workshop. And, it okay. and I'm not thrilled about that. I don't totally excuse the workshop. Uh, we don't need members of the Tourism Board apologizing to the public for the behavior of the members of the Tourism Board because of alcohol. Not acceptable where I sit. Further public discussion. You had something, Commissioner no. Cannon? Hearing none, uh, we'll proceed to vote. Uh, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Let's read the uh, motion. The motion is to remove Angie Arterburn from the Tourism Board effective immediately. Uh, Commissioner Kanda? Aye. Commissioner Flower? Aye. Commissioner Prince? Aye. Motion carries three uh, votes in favor and none against. Uh, Ms. Arterburn, thank you for your service. Uh, I will tell you I voted yes more for your benefit than anything else. Motion carries. Next item of business, uh, change of the location of the water tender. Board of County Commissioners voted to allow the Road and Bridge Department to park a water tender in Wetmore and bring Wetmore's water tender to Boneyard right. to help with the ISO rating on insurance. Uh, that has been done. I did receive a phone call that from a, a uh, individual in Wetmore that said they did come down and get the water truck from Wetmore, took it to the Boneyard fire station, but did not bring a water truck back down to replace that. Oh, so yeah. I got on the phone right away and said, now wait a minute, I what thought our agreement deal? was, I probably assumed they would drive a water truck down uh, there, drive swap, it. drive the water truck back. That didn't happen. They'd rather do it twice. Uh, Road and Bridge took a truck down there uh, parked it, I'm sorry, they went down and got the Wetmore truck, brought it back up, and then did not take a truck down there immediately. They did a couple of days later. So what are we voting? So uh, Gary Hyde called me and said, I'm trying to give you some back to Okay. So I'm I'm from. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> Gary Hyde called me and said, you know, in retrospect here after a few days, it's uh, it's it's become obvious that we would rather have that new water truck parked at Boneyard 
so that is available when they start their mag chloride project. They're going to oh, need so three it's, water it's positioning. So if they were going to do their mag chloride project, they would have to go down to Wetmore, get that truck, bring right. it back up here. Right. So he said, do you think we could park the new water truck at Boneyard and, and keep the old water truck back down uh, in Wetmore so that if they, when they were ready to do the mag chloride, they could just go to Boneyard, get the truck, use it, park it back there instead of having to drive clear to Wetmore. Made sense to me. I'm not sure I'm making it very clear to you. I uh, But I said that I would put that on the agenda. We would have a discussion of that. So it's not going to interfere with the ISO thing that's going on with the fire department. Uh, initially, I was not in favor of parking a new water truck uh, out, in the out in the boonies, but it's going to be a lot closer to their mag chloride project than even if it was sitting in the road and bridge yard in Westcliff. So, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, so uh, I would move that we authorize Gary to move those water trucks around and, and park that new one at, at the Boneyard Fire Station. I'm going to second it, but I want to ask a question. Okay. We move and second it to authorize Gary Hyde to move the water truck from Wetmore back up to the Boneyard Fire Station discussion. Is the reason we're voting on this? Because to me, this is just a logistics vote. It, but is the like reason be because we authorized the new one to be in Wetmore and the new one to be in Boneyard, specific. and we just want to make sure that right. we have on the record that we chose to do it differently? And maybe yeah. we should have just said, this so well, water truck, it, you guys um, work it out. <laughs> well, see, and, and here's a problem with that whole approach. Right, that's not we already did that I know, once. I know, oh, you just go down and do it. Well, it didn't happen, and I got a phone call, and I didn't appreciate that. <laughs> if we say something's going to happen, then but without extenuating circumstances, I expect for that to happen. Uh, the other thing is that um, I certainly was not going to tell Gary Hyde on the phone, sitting in the office by myself as a commissioner, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. I would not appreciate it if you gentlemen do that. I'm certainly not going to do that. So well, I, what I we, feel like any time there's a question, it needs to go on the agenda, and we deal with it. If it's by consent, I'm fine with that. I happen to make the motion uh, because I think at some time we're going to get burned by doing things by consent as well. So, yeah, we specifically said the new water truck was to go to Wetmore. There was no question about that. That's how the motion the was. Yeah. Question's been called. All the way. <coughs> Any debate and moving to an immediate vote, say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Unless the public has an opposition. Uh, well, uh, it's too late now. <laughs> probably should have said and for the boneyard one to go yeah. down there. Uh, I'm sorry. Previous question passed, so debate has ended. Although I'll take uh, Chair's privilege here, debate between us have ended. That doesn't necessarily mean public comment has ended. I believe, did you have something, Ms. Jackie? Okay, go ahead, sir. I don't, I don't have a debate. I want to, I want to man, commend you gentlemen for what you're doing. I don't think people understand in the county, maybe I'm wrong on that, about how critical it is, what you're doing with these water trucks, working with the fire department, with Dave Thompson, Kid Shy, and how much of an impact this is going to have on taxpayer pocketbooks in this county with the possibility, not probability, of lowering insurance rates. And I'll tell you, just from two years ago, when the ISO rating from Rosita Fire Station went from a 9 to a 10. My insurance company lowered my rates $500 a year, 25%. This is an extremely critical thing you're doing, and I commend all three of you. I commend Gary. I commend the fire department. This is a great collaborative governmental effort to lower all of our insurance rates in this county, and thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you for saying that. Appreciate and I just it. want to add, aside from the taxes, which are of paramount importance, the safety is really the issue. We have water closer to where we may need it. That's what really drives us. The taxes is very important, but the safety is really where we are. But, and I really appreciate your comment. Thank you. Further comment? Yes, sir. Could I go <coughs> earlier? Uh, the uh, letter of support for San Isabel Land Protection Trust, was that tabled or okay. was it okay. just... Yeah, let's deal with that. In regular public comment, we're in public comment of moving these water trucks. Oh, right I thought that was so, over. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. Uh, debate here has ended about that motion. That's why uh, I thought it was over. But we'll get to that. Don't bring it up again. Don't okay. let us forget, and we'll talk about that. Uh, further public comment on moving the water trucks. Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries.
will authorize Gary to uh, swap those water trucks back uh, to uh, th their respective places, although Boneyard was not a respective place for a new water truck, so I will call him and let him know that. Um, now we will move into public comment. Sorry, Wilson didn't mean to be no, rude there. My mistake. Uh, yeah, we didn't table that, no. Uh, we actually omitted it from the agenda. There wasn't a motion to table that. So okay. We, so uh, that's still a possibility. It is a possibility if she calls and says, I'd like to put it back on the uh, April 30th agenda. I tried to call her twice this morning. Both cell and office could not get a hold of her. So. Okay. Um, very well may come and say, hey, I'd still like to get her a, a letter of support from the commissioners. I don't know for sure how we would deal with that. But we do have a meeting this afternoon at 2 o'clock. So mm -hmm. is that a meeting or a workshop? Workshop, uh, workshop no. yeah. Workshop. So we won't be making any decisions there. But uh, but we did not table it. No. Okay. We removed it from the agenda. Um, other items under public comment? Yes, ma'am. Um, as background. You guys all know that Dan used to work in the zoning office. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Dan used to work in the zoning office. Right. And when you guys were discussing the fees for the zoning office, um, he, of course, is talking in one ear, and you guys are talking in the other. And uh, he said, you know, as I recall, we tried to raise um, fees, but were told they used to use DU law as some of their um, counselors. And, and probably they being the zoning office gotcha. used to use DU law and because they have a lot of land use attorney kind of things going on there, which might be a good good idea in the future. But anyway, he said he said it was his remembrance that they were unable to because um, it, they had to show that they needed that money, that the, any, any fees had to stay within that office. And we talked about that when you guys were proposing that. So he wrote a letter to the editor, but he didn't save any of his sources. So I had to go and run down a bunch of sources. And it was very, very difficult because if you put in uh, anything about taxes, you get stuff about sales tax. It took me forever. But I did find a um, Supreme, Colorado Supreme Court case. I just picked a little piece of it. I do have the full document at home if anyone wants it. But basically it says, um, if a charge is imposed as part of a comprehensive, well, let's see. Let me just start. So to deter determine whether government has enacted a tax or levied another type of charge, we must determine if the government is exercising its legislative taxation power or its regulatory police power. To make this determination, we examine the government's primary purpose for ex in enacting the charge. And they have all the sources here. If the primary purpose is to raise revenue for general governmental use, it's a tax. And that's what you guys stated, that you were going to have it go into the general fund. A tax must be, must go before the voters. Tabor. So, I am going to just give this to you guys. You guys can discuss it, do what you want. Um, but I do believe that that may have been in error. Um, but fee, boy, did I have a hard time. It go before the public because it, it's that, No, it's a tax. tax. If it I mean, was, we, we treated it as a fee, and you're saying it's not. It's not a fee and because it it's, the money's going into the general fund. Okay. Uh, because her office is already self-supporting. Self and uh, we discussed that. I asked you specifically why right. we're doing like this. So from council. Feel free, you know, you don't yeah. even have to discuss it with me. I just wanted to present right. that to you. Something to consider. Yeah. Uh, I, I would just respond by saying I do not believe it was a tax. I think we raised the rates, the fee schedule of the planning and zoning, obviously all the tax money in this, or all of the county money in this county goes into the general fund. Whether it's earmarked or not is another matter, uh, but we raised the fee schedule of the planning and zoning office. But, again, Council, do you have any comment or perspective? Or? Well, just off the top of my head, I haven't looked at this case, but I think it was clearly done with the intent of 
raising the amount for the permits to cover the cost of what planning and zoning does, which is part of the regulatory uh, duty of the county. I don't think it was a general tax at all. But thank you for your input. We will continue to research, maybe charge with council to look into that a little more, and uh, I'll look at it. Yeah, yes. I think uh, I would agree with that. We don't want to get in the hot water one way or the other, but uh, it's a good point to bring up. I don't claim to come <clears throat> back with some more. Uh, uh, certainly it's been a long time since those fees were raised, but the last time they were raised, I can tell you it was not challenged as a tax or it would have been in court. It was, they raised the fees of the planning and zoning department, or the zone, planning uh, department, sorry. Uh, so, but your point's well taken. We'll research it, and we could be wrong. But if we are, then I would suspect we'll have some attorney telling us that. So well, we don't want to. You're right. We don't want to have somebody out of the blue do it. I mean, probably ought to understand. If they did it in the past, maybe they made a mistake in the past. And no, I don't buy that for a minute. Well, I, don't know. Uh, I mean, you're 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 entitled to your opinion. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just stating my yeah. thought here. Be cautious uh, and <coughs> assume that just because somebody did it in the past, it was correct. Uh, that, that gets you in a lot of trouble in some cases. Well, certainly can, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, not uh, when that you it raise did. a fee structure, you raise a fee structure. Well, so uh, certainly I would not, as a commissioner, propose to raise a tax on a vote of three people. That would be insane mm -hmm. to do in this county. If we made a mistake, then we will own up to that. I don't believe we did, but uh, point well taken. Thank you. Further comment from the public? I'm not quite public, but can I ask a comment? You certainly can. <laughs> You're you. pretty public. <laughs> Sometimes way too. Um, we still have pending the broadband question. When I, I, don't, I was surprised when it wasn't on this agenda. When are we going to discuss the um, question that was raised at the last uh, meeting that we you had. Set a date, Did we set the date for that? I guess I'm not tracking. Um, the support letter. We're going to make a decision gonna, today. That's what I thought too. A decision about what? To support the um, EDA. Is that right? EDA, the EDA yeah. grant. The economic. I mean, for the environmental study. Right. The thirty thousand dollars. Take that from. Um, Dola. I thought we'd push that further than that. I didn't. I don't remember. Well, I thought it was, was kind of pending. We needed to do was it supposed to be this meeting? Okay. Yeah, because we can't proceed with uh, EDA grant until we get that study completed. Right. Okay. Uh, <coughs> if it is, we're going to have to move it. Yeah, I was not following when you were I'm sorry. I, talking I about a question. I just couldn't remember what questions were left pending, but you're exactly right. The $30,000. The $30,000. Uh, yeah, whether we borrow the table, the future or whatever. Uh, obviously, it did not make this an, an agenda. I can assure you that was an oversight on my part. Okay. I, I can't speak for the other commissioners. Executive but, session, and that's why. Uh, no, we well, would never do that. Um, so... Uh, I did get uh, documents from Mr. Mullen on his I did too. On yeah, I did whole too. thing, so uh, I thought maybe that's where you were headed. I just couldn't, no, I couldn't follow. So the only thing I know to do uh, it would be one of two solutions here. Obviously, we can add it to the April 30th agenda. We cannot deal with it today. Or uh, if you feel like it's critical that we call a special commissioner meeting, uh, and we can do that as well. So I don't know. Um, Just point of order. Could it be unfinished business since no. it was a pending item? Yeah, no. that's, I thought it might have gone under there. No. Yeah. Okay. No. No, because you'd have to have public. You'd have yeah. to let the public know. That they would have to. Well, have broadband. The yeah. people that carry would yeah. have to. Go. Yep. And let's put it on the and April thirtieth yeah. agenda. Again, uh, for something to be on unfinished business. Yeah, it has to be an item of business that was being discussed and was interrupted from some extraneous thing, right. fire, right. I got a chemical spill, whatever. Got it, got it. Other than that, Jay, I, I, you mentioned the third. I think it, it ought, that meeting would be pretty tight to throw that into. Maybe we ought to do it the following day or whenever that next meeting is, the first and second of 
May. Oh, I, I should say, yeah. You okay, we, it would allow. Yeah, I was just suggesting we move it to the a next meeting. Right, a next But not put it too far out, because so. I'd like to give them an answer. I thought, yeah. I don't know why I was under the impression we were going to do it. I was under the impression we were going to do it at the, at the end of the month. I don't know why. Okay. The 30th is at full. Is it super full? Well, it doesn't matter. We can put it on. Yeah. It's, it doesn't matter if it's full. It's what we get paid to do is run meetings. So if we need to add it, we can add it. But uh, we can... I don't know. Wilson wants, wants to, to say. say uh, the one on the second? What, seven what we and eight. eight. Okay. I would say let's put up the very next meeting since. As soon as possible, sir. Yeah, yeah I agree. We're uh, just sitting there. Okay, by me. Yeah, I would do anything. Right. What, what's on the agenda? Just a, a special on the agenda, meeting. just out of curiosity. Uh, a special event for the Arch Trail Mountain Trail Run, the two waiver for the landfill piece for Silver Cliff and West Cliff cleanup day. Okay. We can have and then the on discussion on of the by consent, gentlemen. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I yeah. think that's fine. So, Mayor, if you will add that. April 30th. Yes, our apologies. Consideration I, of EDA. I've looked at that uh, agenda for broadband uh, grant or broadband, what do we want to call it? EDA I, I would say, study. Um, study. Uh, well, it's consideration of asking Dola, Dola for, for the $30,000 uh, $30, upfront money for EDA. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up, Wilson. That was an oversight. I apologize. Okay. Yeah, I'm just sitting here if that doesn't happen. Anything that was happening later. <laughs> oh, why? Um, this is such a comfortable room. I'm, I'm yeah. Like further. This is better than our table, and it's wider. Further public comment. And I know it's a school one because it's dumb. It really truly is. I got Hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. I'll second. To move and second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 I'm sorry. Those nay. I'm sorry. Motion carries. We are in adjournment. <coughs> yeah, I always wait because I think, well, maybe you don't know. But.